resonate in this place through the angles of time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Upgrade your expectation. I'm going to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not trying to pick on anybody this morning, okay? Did the shoe, did the shoe fit? Where? Some of the young people that were there outside, so they wouldn't know nothing about this stuff. Have you ever used an outdated product? There are many products on the market today that will be out of date before the end of the year. These products will be outdated shortly after they're taken out of the box, requiring an update. In the 60s and the 70s, the world raved over the boom boxes. Y'all remember the boom boxes? They were large radios that had powerful sound, but they were soon made out of date by a walking headset that could deliver the same sound without disturbing anyone else. Those who had boom boxes had to update. Those who bought 78 RPMs, the records found that the 33 RPM albums were better, forcing an update. Those who bought the albums soon needed to upgrade because eight track tapes were the new craze. Anybody remember the eight track tape? They were quickly replaced by cassettes, forcing another upgrade. Cassettes were short-lived when CDs became available. Upgrades are everywhere, y'all. The VHS movies are not replaced by DVDs. If you own a VHS player, you need to upgrade. <coughs> Here's a good one. Rotary telephones. They require an upgrade to touch tones. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but in certain cases, if you have an emergency, the rotary won't dial 911. You have to have the touch tone. Microwave ovens are displacing stove tops for warming food, and digital cameras replacing film and made Polaroid photos a blast from the past. In fact, Polaroid would not make film for the instant camera after March. Even television is switching to digital, and digital is switching to high definition. If you have an old TV next month, you will have to upgrade to see anything because everything now is HD TV. When you thought you were comfortable with CPM computers and five and a half inch floppy drives, then came Windows 95. And Three and a half inch floppies. Come on now, somebody. No sooner than you adjusted to that, you had to upgrade to Windows 98 and Windows 2000, Windows XP, and then the CD ROM instead of the floppy drives. Some have already discovered that their Windows XP needs to be upgraded to Windows Vista. As long as you want the same results and nothing breaks, there's no need for an upgrade. If your 8-track tape still works and you like only those tapes, then you will never need anything else. But when something goes wrong with your 8-track tape, you will have to upgrade to a new model. I remember, I guess it was in the 70s, I had a 68 Cadillac, black, and I had 8 tracks sitting in the middle of the floorboard. You couldn't tell me nothing. Put some, some extra speakers in it. Go to town, you know, ride in town with the windows down. Eight track was the ball. But like everyone else, I had to adjust because the problem that I had was sooner or later my tape started breaking. And it forced me to go to cassettes. What about your relationship with God? Have you upgraded your relationship? Or is it workable? When we accept Christ as our Savior, we expect and receive salvation. But many have not upgraded our relationship to the next level, which is to accept Him as our Lord. Is it time for a spiritual upgrade in your life? 
Is it time for us to study on a deeper level or do we still need a picture stories to go by? Is it time to know how to pray or should we be content with now our living it down to sleep? Is it time to walk in the spirit with Christ as our Lord or should we continue walking in the darkness? We know it's time for an upgrade but our new CD circumstances won't play in our old 8 to 8 right now. It's time for a spiritual upgrade. As Christians, we continue to upgrade our relationship with Christ. We want to be closer, reach higher, and dig deeper to know Him and realize His purpose for our life. And each time we upgrade, He takes us to another level that takes us closer to our ultimate goal. The text focuses on Paul explaining his expectations to move to the level of spirituality that would magnify Christ the greatest. Paul spoke of his earnest expectation that Christ would be magnified completely through his life work. It was like the final level of accomplishment that he saw for his own spirituality that had moved from being a persecutor of the church to a promoter of Christianity in the world order. Paul's experience in the faith was a continuous upgrade. He upgraded to be an advocate. He upgraded from an advocate to be a champion. We read how he described the faith as continuous upgrades like babes that began with milk, then needed the meat of the word. We read his letters to the Corinthians in which he spoke of maturing in his thinking and understanding. He said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spake like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And in this text, he speaks of his desire and expectations to upgrade to one final level, that of being a catalyst through which others might better see Christ. It's the highest level of spirituality. He wanted to achieve this level, not for himself, but for the God that he served. A few things and then we out of the way. First of all, we need to upgrade our personal life. Is it time to upgrade our personal lives? When we stop to think about it, we may have a personal life that's moving, but it's not getting us anywhere. We are not growing spiritually, and we're not maturing, we're not getting strong. What we are doing is okay, but it's time for an upgrade in our lives. Our ability to effectively manage our time, our resources and affections usually reflect themselves in quality personal lives. Time management is a killer. In the African American community, we have a declining respect for time. We usually start everything 30 to 45 minutes late and never know when to end. That reflects a time management problem. Success at any adventure requires the ability to manage time. There should be time for the three P's, planning, paperwork, and prayer. We need time to adequately plan, do necessary paperwork, paperwork to accomplish our goals, and time alone to pray, read, and think. If you have not been allocating that kind of time needed to advance yourself, maybe it's time for an upgrade. Like that old eight track tape, what you're doing now might work fine to some rates. Then you'll realize that you should have upgraded many years ago. Managing our money is another killer. Since most of us are just one paycheck away from poverty, if we miss one paycheck, we can serious trouble. Money and management is extremely important. Yes, one of the areas in which we are extremely vulnerable. We tend to die with our eyes rather than our heads. Often we look for symbols rather than substance. As a result, most of us spend ourselves in the debt. Credit cards usually kill us because a person who owns multiple credit cards with a zero balance is still considered in debt because they have the capacity to get huge sums on those cards. We know we only need one car, but we can't find the courage to cut up another seven. <laughs> Most of us have no savings or investments. Even the poorest person
person can say something if he or she really wants to. All we need to do is take one week out of each month and spend nothing. Not a bag of chips, not a cup of coffee, not a candy bar, not a movie on demand. Save that week's money and you have a plan. And for those who are interested, I have a, a thing on my savings plan on my Facebook page. It's over 52 weeks. The first week you put a dollar. The second week you put two dollars. And it just keeps increasing. The third week, three dollars. At the end of the year, you have $1,376. So just go to my Facebook. I think it's on the website also. And you just print your copy of it. It ain't too late to start. It may be time to change the way we manage our resources. What we are doing now works until something breaks. Then, like the old late track tape, we discovered that we should have upgraded seven years ago. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody got an uh, old refrigerator? You just hated to go buy that new refrigerator until it broke. Then you were forced to go get one. Anybody had a favorite stone they used that somebody might have gave them? And it worked for so many years and all of a sudden it started leaking, malfunctioning, wouldn't make right. You were forced to upgrade and go get another. Ah. Same thing with a car. Anybody got a car that they had to get up early in the morning, like two hours before they had to go to work just to make sure the car cranked? Sooner or later, that gets old. That's fine as long as it cranks. But what about the morning when you got a meeting and it doesn't crank? It's time for an upgrade. The same is true for those who are married. If couples are experiencing strained relationships, it may be time to upgrade and get help or not simply continue doing what you've been doing. If we keep doing that, this did not work last year, we'll get the same results this year. It's time to upgrade. Then it's time to upgrade our family life. It's time to upgrade our family relationships. The strength of the family is directly related to several elements. Quality time, understanding, support, and love. Generally, that must make families work well. Too many families underestimate the importance of quality time. Quality time is time dedicated to the interests of other family members with nothing else on the agenda. I don't know about y'all, but I remember the time when I was coming up before I started working when everybody had to be at the table at 6 o'clock to eat dinner. Family time. It went on exception. They had something going on in the church, you got choir practice, you're going to be late because the family had to sit together and eat. That didn't happen on Sunday, that happened after that. And then we would talk about the issues in the family. It's the time that a husband and wife spend together doing what others might call ordinary. It's the family gatherings, the in house talent shows, the Animated funny moments when everyone feels enough, free enough to let their guard down and laugh and relax. It's the shared moments that make quality time essential to every family. Look at your plan for the year. How much quality time is planned? Are family trips in your schedule? If your kids are participating in school activities, will the family participate with them? Or will they go it alone and pick them up out? Do you have a getaway in the plan? If not, then maybe it's time to upgrade your family plan. What you're doing now may seem to work, but sooner or later, you're going to need to upgrade. The same is true for support, love, and understanding. Family support. Families really support each other. Family members rarely involve themselves in major undertaking without the support of their family. When the family supports the family member, that means defense and offense. It defends family members when they are wrongfully attacked in pursuit of a stated goal. At the same time, a supportive family 
takes the offense and uses all the resources at its disposal, including time, talents, and money, to help a family member achieve a goal. A family that loves his family members, even when the tears roll in disgust over some mistakes that we've made, some choices that we've made. Has your family been supportive of family members in the past? If not, maybe it's time to upgrade. That's why it's important that you have family reunions. So many times, children are grown before they even know who their relatives are. Because we never took time to go to a family reunion and find out who our relatives And that's important because you never know when your family members are moving to your community. Young folks might want to start dating somebody. Couldn't find out they related to them. You need to know who your family members are. And not only that, you need to be able to come together and pray and worship together with your family members. Family the new bird, we need to upgrade our spirituality. Mm. It also might be a need to upgrade our relationship with God. Our relationship with God defines the level of our expectation from Him. And God knows that's the truth. If you got a little bit of faith, you'd be asking for a little bit of things. You don't ask for a whole lot. But when you got big faith, you have big expectations from God. Give an example. There are persons who have a small measure of faith. And they might just be content with having a job. It doesn't matter where the job is. If you need me to clean them clothes, I can go. You, I mean, I'm not about to clean them clothes now. But that's all that they expect. They need to upgrade their expectations to say, I need to quit myself that I might be the president of the company. And then I get somebody else and I'm going to do the floor stuff to help me grow this company. You don't have to start at the bottom all the time. If it's in God's plan, you can excel and you can be greater than anybody can ever expect you to be. But you have to do some preparations and upgrade your expectation. You don't have to go in an entry level position all the time. So many times we have people who go, go to college and they finish college and they accept a line job or uh, any position just to get in the door. Don't be content with that. Reach for greater. The person that interviews you for that entry level position, start with their position. Prepare yourself educationally. Prepare yourself with the experience that you might be the interviewer, that you can help somebody else. The more we know about God, the more we know what to expect from Him. The more we study about God, the more we understand His ways. The more we study His ways, the more we understand the movement of His hand. We can't approach a vision of God with an eight-track expectation. We need to upgrade our expectation to match the power of the God that we serve. When a, a widow woman realized that she was down on her last cup of meal and her last cruise of oil, she expected to eat the last meal and then die. And then she heard the word from the Lord that told her to upgrade her expectations. And we, she expected more from God and acted in faith. Every day she went to the barrel, there was food to eat. But first she had to upgrade her expectations. There's somebody like the widow woman today. Our resources are running low. Our money is drying out and we expect to be a complete failure. But we should not expect a total loss of anything. We should upgrade our expectations and know that God that we serve is working to work it out for you. Job's friend saw his miserable situation and could not see no way out. His money was gone. This is how folks are in your community. His money was gone. His health had failed. And he only had fragments of his family left. They concluded that Job should just curse God and die. Job's friend had an eight-track expectation that needed to be upgraded. But I need Job to declare, oh, Elphaz, Bill Dad, and so far. Oh, you need to upgrade your understanding of the God that I serve. Just because you heard that I lost all my money, you expect me to give up on God. <clears throat> Just because you heard that my children were killed, you expect me 
to give up on the Lord. You heard that my help was failing, and I'm covered with sores, and you expect me to give up on God. You need to upgrade your expectation. Everything that I have belongs to God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yea, though he slain it, yet will I trust him. If you hold your head down today, think that everything is lost. Upgrade your expectation. God. Thank you. 